welcome. In this video, I will show you how to add a pre and a post build script to your build definition. So what you need to accomplish this is to have a full version of TFS 2013. You have to have team build 2013 and obviously an application to build. So essentially I will walk through two PowerShell script, one a pre build and another one a post build script. The pre build script will handle versioning and the post build script will gather all the um, assets that you want to actually deploy. So we're going to modify our team build definition to add those scripts and then we're going to queue a build and validate the layout. So let's go to a demo. So I'm going to start by going to an MSDN site. I have the URL in the uh, conclusion slide and essentially they talk about how to add and where you want to actually put these things. I'll show you that in the demo. But most importantly, there are links to examples of scripts. I am actually going to use uh, this script, the apply, the apply version to assembly uh, as is. I'm just going to change the name of it. And then this gather items for drop, I'm going to use the, the start of this script, but I'm going to modify the bottom part of it. So let's actually go and look at those scripts right now. So I'm going to go to my demo website. In my demo website, I have the uh, directory called ops scripts. I want to actually use those this directory and make sure I copy some of those scripts, namely the deployment scripts, over to my build definition. And when I actually compile my site, I want to make sure that I have the uh, quote unquote publish website uh, assets in my build output in a proper directory that I can actually deal with. So what's under this ops scripts? So I have some deploy scripts which we'll actually use in a later video, but for now I'm going to show you the pre and the post. So let's look at the pre-build script. This again is a as-is script from the website, so you can actually just consume this as-is. Uh, I'm going to walk you through it just to understand, but essentially it's a PowerShell script that takes uh, some parameters that are environment variable that are passed by the build server to the PowerShell script. So we're going to look at uh, the source directory and the build number in this particular script, and I'll show you some other variables a little bit in, in the next in the post build script. So our our version number needs to be in the format of a number dot a number dot a number dot a number in order to be replaced in uh, in our assembly info.cs. So this actually ver validates that this is actually been called by the build server. So it looks for environment variable, making sure that those exist. And if they don't exist, then it's going to exit with an error. So we can go down, it's going to look at the build number, do the same thing. Then it's going to actually extract from the build number. And we'll look at that when we actually modify the build script. So it's going to extract from the build number the, the version number. And it's going to put that under version data. And if there's more than one version number, it's going to give you some warning and, 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 and or exit. From there, it's actually going to go in the source directory. And under the properties or my project for BB, it's going to look for all the assembly info.cs files or .star files and basically get a list of those under this files variable. From here, it's going to do a for each loop. It's going to remove the, uh, the read only attribute and it's going to basically replace in the content anything that has a number dot number dot number dot number with the new version number that it just got from the build number and it's going to rewrite uh, that file out here and then it's going to just mark us as being uh, uh, the version being applied or it's going to say that it didn't find any assembly info.cs so this is the pre-build script the post build script uh, does something very similar so essentially here we validate some uh, environment variable passed from the build server. We're going to go down. If they don't exist, specifically the build, uh, the binary directory, it's actually going to create the, the, the directory for us. And then finally, what I do uh, is I, instead of gathering all the DLLs, for example, I want to copy my scripts. I want to make sure that they're coming from ops scripts, the directory I just showed you, and I'm copying that over into the build uh, binary directory in the ops script folder. And we're going to look at that when we actually look, but I'm actually taking only the deploy dash star files. I don't really need build scripts uh, to be in my build output, but I do want my deploy uh, scripts to be in the output. From here, I also copy my website 
notice that I'm actually looking into the source directory, my demo website, bin, and then publish websites. This is the expected, the expected output of my build. And I'm actually copying that under my binary directory in publish websites. A couple of things we'll need to set up to make sure that our website is in the right location that we can actually copy. And then we're going to look at that. So I'm going to close those two things. And now let's go and look at our build definition. So I have a build definition already created. We looked at that in the previous video. So I'm actually going to open this and I'm going to show you uh, under process what needs to be changed in order to get what we need to do. So first thing is uh, I'm going to go into the build section and in here what we want to do is we want to add a few things. So the first thing we want to do is we want to make sure that our output is under the bin publish website. So how do we do that? Because the problem that we need is since we are going to copy stuff over into ourselves into the bin directory, we actually need to change the output location to be instead of being single project, which actually basically overrides the out there and, and does everything for us, we need to leave it as configured. So Visual Studio basically compiles and leaves it into the source directory that we can then copy over. So for this to happen, we actually need to compile our project and do a deploy through the MS deploy executable. So how do we do that? Then in our project, we actually want to go under proper, actually what we can do is create basically a publish profile. So we're going to just basically hit the publish and it, we're going to create a new one if we don't have any. I currently have one which is called local and uh, let's look at how it's set up. So it's set up as file system and I actually want to, my target to be bin publish website, which is exactly where I'm going to copy stuff from. So that's the important thing to do. So once I have this, this will actually create a publish website directory containing my local pub XML. And in here, in my build definition, I just want to say deploy on build equals through, and I want to publish with my publish profile called local pub XML. So I now have the link between my two things and I'm always going to produce a uh, underscore publish website uh, with uh, in the local source directory which I can then copy over. The next thing is to set up a pre-build script. So essentially I just need to point it to uh, where it is under source control. So I have my op script under source control. I'm going to point to my pre-build script then I'm going to do the exact same thing with my post build script. I'm going to copy that over. I'm going to basically select it and make it uh, appear over here. And then finally, one thing I did is I removed my test because I wasn't running any tests. So it wasn't uh, really necessary and it would just basically uh, lengthen the, the, the build execution. And the final thing we need to do in order for this to work is we need to change our build number scheme so that it actually produces four digits. So I'm actually keeping the build number exactly as it was, but instead of using uh, year, month, day, uh, all stuck together, I'm actually putting a dot between the two of them. So that gives me a number here that you can see 2015.03.12.1, which is four digits. And that's actually going to be replaced in my DLLs and me at myassemblyinfo.cs. And we'll look at that after the build has been executed. Also be aware that you can actually create your own build scheme if you want. So uh, for example, I could put 1.1.1.2 and basically that will create the, the build number in question. I could also, if I like to have the revision here, uh, because that makes sense, I can also go to my macro here, kind of open it up and then look at the revision number and just double click. It's going to add that over here and we'll see that we'll now have 11101. So essentially you can put any build scheme that you care about in, in this particular section. So I'm going to put back what we had before. So after I've done all those change, I can basically just go back into my Team Explorer here and right click, queue a new build. We looked at that. I'm actually going to save this and I'm going to queue a build. So let's actually look at this build executing here. So we can see the build output here. 
So I'm just going to basically open my drop folder. On my drop folder, we see that we have this op script directory. In here, I only have my deploy scripts, which is what I need to do. And then I actually have my published website, which actually holds the bin and uh, all the other assets that I had. Now, uh, the version number changing would change the DLL here. So if I right click on here and I open that and I go to details, we see that we actually have our uh, file version in here, which is actually super important for traceability. So now I can actually trace this build, this DLL, to this build here. This build here, then I can have under source control, I can trace which file actually produced this build. And then from here, we can actually look at if uh, work items are attached and, and do all our traceability this way. So in conclusion, I have a couple of links to tell you how to work with team build, uh, how to create a build definition, and finally, uh, the link to the site I just showed at the beginning of the video where you can actually just download the script yourself and then start modifying them from here. Thank you.